And so, my dear ones, here we are on this great Sunday. And the days, they go fly, do they not? And I'm knowing they're good days. I'm knowing that for myself, and I'm knowing that for everybody here. So today we're looking at a very important thing, and it's called intention. And we all have our own ideas about what intention is. And you can go to the dictionary and look it up, you know, Google it. Or go to the old-fashioned dictionary and go like that if you still have one. But an intention is a specific purpose we have in mind with certain actions to follow that will bring about a certain realization of a goal. Now that's a conscious intention. But did you know there are unconscious intentions too? And an unconscious intention is what I'm interested in, really. What I need to be interested in, because it affects my life. And an unconscious intention is an unexpected outcome. Something not known, something unforeseen, unintentional consequences that happens because of an unconscious intention. Now that I want to really dig into and learn more about because it's affecting my life. And the reason why it's affecting my life is because intentions create my reality. So I want to be aware of my hidden intentions, my unconscious intentions. You see, the whole spectrum of our emotional life can be reduced down to two major aspects, love and fear. Out of that flow, out of those two seminal aspects, everything flows. And so when I am angry and fearful and resentful and vengeance-like, I am moving at a very low vibrational spin. My energy currents, my frequencies are low. And along with those, you can throw in sorrow and shame and guilt and embarrassment and all the rest of it. And these frequencies cause a feeling of depletion. They leak power, our power. Depletion, weakness, uh, exhaustion, a feeling of can't cope, not able to cope. On the other hand, love, the highest of all frequencies, when we are coming from that energy, it is boosting our frequencies and our vibrations. And the result of it is buoyancy, vibrancy, lightness, joy. And so it's important for us to know what's going on with us when we find ourselves in states that are negative or states that are affirmative to understand why that is. And it's never because of something that happened out there. Never. Ever. Even though you may have won the lotto or whatever. Today, we are going to hone in on one very seminal thing that's as important to our spiritual unfoldment as anything is. It's key to it. And it's the understanding of this. You, me, all of us control the power within us. We control that energy flow, that life force, that energy force, that power force that is within us. And our job is to control it consciously. Consciously. And when we do that, we're well on our way to the soul's emancipation. Well on our way. So, as I'm thinking and as I'm feeling, it's making my life so. So if I'm thinking along the negative lines of reasoning, 
and I'm allowing my feelings to follow, I am not consciously controlling the power within me. There's no way I'm doing that because if I was conscious, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be depleting myself like that and allowing all kinds of leakage to occur. No way. And so what happens is every time I have an affirmative thought, a good feeling, I am boosting my energy center. And it affects everything and everyone around me too. It boosts everything and everyone around me too, as does my negative thoughts and feelings. Deplete not only me, but everything around and about me too. Depletes the energy. Because we're interconnected with the whole of life, and life is energy. You know that. Quantum physics, energy, energy, energy is all there is. You know that. That's all there is. And we are part of that energy. So, for example, if I want to um, attract companionship and friendship into my life, and I really do want that, I want companionship, I want friendship in my life. Well, if I am still staying in my resentment, in my anger, in my annoyance, in my upsetness, in my resistance, in my, you know, in the dumps all the time, I am not going to be attracting to myself companionship and fellowship. In fact, the hidden intention for that produces quite the opposite. It puts me into separation and it keeps people at bay. I'm keeping people at bay with those kinds of frequencies flowing because that's what I'm channeling, those kinds of frequencies. If I have the intention that I want to fix or amend or heal a relationship, for example, too, and I make up my mind, I want this relationship to work, I want to fix it and mend it and so on, and I start to change the energy around it, because that's the first thing I have to do, is to start changing the energy around the relationship. Not easy. I have to think about it differently, I have to feel about it differently, I have to go about it differently. But as I begin to do that and I start to change the energy and the energy starts to move in the direction of the healing and then what crops up is, well, do I really want this relationship or not? Do I really want it to work? I mean, is that what I really want? Um, do I want to continue? Do I want to end it? What do I want to do? And so now your energy is all over the place. All over the place. And you come back to it and you endeavor again and you say, no, I want this to happen. And your intention is strong. But if your hidden intention is to end the relationship, that's the strongest intention and that will be the result. So we have to watch ourselves in these matters. When you have that toing and froing and that dichotomizing, which is part of a, a, always a decision to, when you're in a relationship and you want to do something about it. It's always part of that decision. Now, try as you might to mend it and fix it and so on, the more you'll be digging in your heels and saying, no, I want this to end, because that's truly your unconscious intention. And it's important for you and for me to understand that the only important thing in life is knowing, recognizing, first and foremost, that there's power and energy within us, and it's our job to manage it and to control it, because if we don't, somebody else will, something else will. And even little children get that when they say, you're not the boss of me, <laughs> you know? Now, that works to a point with us all. Um, you're not the boss of me, we'll say, when it doesn't suit us. But when it suits us, we don't mind you being the boss of me, because that suits me fine. But only for as long as it suits me will you get to be the boss of me. As soon as it doesn't suit me anymore, hey, you're not the boss of me. It changes. So the whole idea to begin with is be your own boss all the time. You don't need anybody to be the boss of you. You are loaded with power, with energy. You are loaded with the universal stuff itself, the energy of the universe. 
and to think it's as simple as learning how to manage it with regard to how we end up living and what we attract into our lives. To think that. It's an amazing thing. Think about it. Each and every one of us is a light force being. We came from an invisible force made out of invisible force. Our home is invisible force. We want to return to our home, light, power, love, whatever you want to call it, an invisible force. And that's what causes us our frustrations because we feel at times such a long way from home, estranged from our natural habitat. That's who we are. Can you imagine? If we all knew that we were light beings, here to be light beings, to recognize light beings, and to live as such, this world would be so different, would it not? Dr. Bitzer always signed every book and every piece of paper he gave to anybody with, All power is with you. All power. Not an itsy bitsy bit over there, a little more in her there, a dab perhaps more in him there. Oh, she's loaded with it. Him? <laughs> I can't even see a sign. All power is given to each and every single one of us. And our intentions show up in our dispositions, our aptitudes, and our attitudes, hidden and known. And it all has to do with the way we're using the power and the energy. We do not want to give any person, place, or thing the power over our psychic energy. Never, ever, 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 ever. Never. Because that's the infinite intelligence of life itself within us. Oh my gosh. Do you know how many people will never hear this on this planet? Will never know this on this planet this lifetime. And yet you do. What are you going to do with this powerful knowledge? How is that going to change you? Because this week you and I are going to be honing in on intention. Do you even know your intentions? Do I even know my intentions? Do we have any idea? Well now, I was kind of okay with the known intentions, but it's only in recent years that I've been working with the unknown intentions. Because when you intend and you intend and you intend and it's just not happening, something must be stopping and blocking it. And it's the unconscious intentions. And whichever is the strongest intention wins out, wins out all of the time. So, in this coming week, we're going to face ourselves down. Don't you love getting yourself by the horns and facing yourself down? And sometimes it's a job even to grab onto one of them, far less the two or ten, as the case may be. <laughs> However many we've grown. <laughs> but to do that is a wonderful, wonderful exercise and a wonderful thing to do. Go around with a notebook close to you this week, I tell you, because the insights will come fast and furiously if you're open to them with regard to your intentions. And so we ask ourselves, every single day when we wake up, what is my intention for today? What is my intention for the day? And further than that, every time you start a new task in the day, ask yourself, what is my intention here? What is my intention here? And more than that, when you begin to feel anger and annoyance and resentment and all of that icky, ucky, awful stuff, ask yourself, what is my intention here? before you respond. What is my intention here? We don't ask ourselves that question enough. What is my intention here? Now, we can either live our lives intentionally 
with a sense of reverence and respect for it all, or we can live it unintentionally in ignorance and mindlessness and see how we do when we choose either or. So I'm asking us all to be accountable in the coming week with regard to what our attentions are for the week. Isn't it interesting when you know I am a point of power through which radiant, infinite, intelligent magnificence expresses itself fully, wholly, and completely. And yet, look at us. And we know that. But obviously, we only intellectually know it now and again for a second or two. And then it goes in this ear, in this ear, and out the window. But that's the truth. That's the truth of who you are and what you are. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter a whit, as they say in Ireland. I'm still trying to find out what a whit is, but anyway. It doesn't matter a whit what people think about you, what idea they have about you, what feeling they have about you, how they have defined you. It matters not. Not in the slightest, because guess what? It doesn't matter how good and well-behaved you are, people are going to think whatever they want to think. And it's nothing to do with you, it's all about their own thinking and their own feeling. What does matter is what your source thinks about you, number one, and then you coming into agreement with what your source thinks about you. Now there's where you go if you want to know who you are. You don't ever have to look at somebody else and say, who am I? What am I? Who am I? You go to source. You insource it. Never outsource anything spiritually. Always, first and foremost, insource it. And then the guidance will be to go, uh, go out and find whatever it is you need in order for something to happen that you want to happen intentionally. This is such great news that if you all got it, and I got it too, I'd be doing uh, Michael Flatley up here and you'd be doing whatever dance appeals to you. You would not be sitting in those seats. You'd be shouting and bawling and hollering, hallelujah, and all the rest of it. But we're sowing the seeds here today so that maybe by the end of the week we could do a little step or two because we're getting it. Well, start there. We'll start wherever we can. But you can only, only, only be all that you're created to be when the truth sets you free. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. And don't be afraid of the truth. Always be afraid of the lack of it. We can cope with the truth. What we cannot cope with is the non-truth. That's why we get so upset. We think of ourselves in untruthful terms. We call ourselves by untruthful names. And we call each other, too, by untruthful names. But it's true, you know. There's great wisdom in the old rhyme, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? In our lives, in our intentions, in our purposes, in our doings. I'm going to ask you too to look at all the people who are close to you in your life this week and see what they demonstrate, what their dispositions are, and so on. Are they gossips? Are they kind? Are they lovers of life? Are they curmudgeons? What is their energy frequencies? You'll know. You'll know what their energy frequencies are by the thoughts they think and the feelings they feel. And ask yourself, is that what I want to be attracting into my life to keep my frequencies low? Do I want to keep myself buoyant and up? 
And I'll leave you with this and understand it well. I'm learning it and learning it and learning it myself. Ever so slowly, it seems sometimes to me, that there's only one reason why we are here, and it's to give. It's never to take. Never is it to take. It's to give, to give and not count the cost. To understand, not so much as to be understood. To love, and not so much to be loved. It's to give, it's to give, it's to give, and only love can cause us to be that kind of a giver. And when we are at that stage, we are flying and floating, and our buoyancy and frequencies are off the charts. So look to yourself and ask yourself, if I was to examine myself on the giver-taker scale, where am I on that scale? And where are all the people close to me on that scale? You see, givers will attract givers, and takers will attract takers, and the takers will find that after a while, they won't be trusting each other. That's what takers are suspect of other takers. So the lesson of today is make your intention, make my intention an intention to live at the high frequency of love, and in so doing become the giver that I was created to be because I am defined as the image and likeness of spirit and spirit is defined as the givingness of life back onto itself. And that's who you are and that's what you are and it's amazing and it's incredible and it's awesomely beautiful and you're there right now. You just have to recognize it you just have to know it so that you can feel it and then keep being it. And so it is.